Hi, Pastor John Hampton here from Journey Christian Church. Thanks for giving me a few minutes of your time as we talk about the subject of baptism. It was just about a year ago that we had a baptism celebration weekend here at Journey where we saw 116 people baptized in one weekend. I've never been a part of anything like that before or since. Now, I've been a part of many different baptism celebrations and big events like that, but never seen that kind of outpouring of God's Spirit and that many people coming. It was, it, it was incredible. And no matter how many times I baptize someone, it never gets old. Because every baptism represents a life changed by the power of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I want to talk to you a little bit. Uh, we're going to have another baptism weekend coming up, September 14th and 15th. That's during our weekend services. I'm going to be teaching that weekend on the story, and we're going to focus on Jesus' baptism. And I thought that would be a great time as we look at Jesus' baptism to ask some important questions and to help challenge people to consider why they need to be baptized. So if you haven't been baptized, if you've never been baptized by immersion, or if you uh, don't remember being baptized, I want to encourage you to take just a few moments and let me give you some reasons why you should consider doing this on September 14th or 15th. The first reason I would say is this, is Jesus was baptized. And maybe you don't need any more reason than that because we call ourselves Christians or Christ followers. And Jesus himself was baptized. He set an example. He said it's the right thing to do. He said it sets the pattern of righteousness that he wants for us. So Jesus himself was baptized, and that's a pretty important reason. Secondly, Jesus commanded his followers to be baptized. After Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, Jesus comes to them and he says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them everything I have commanded you. So part of Jesus' instructions after his death, burial, and resurrection, he told his disciples, I want you to go and tell everybody in the world about me, and those who accept your message, I want you to baptize them. And that baptism will mark them as my followers in a unique way. So Jesus not only modeled baptism, he commanded his followers to be baptized. The third reason I would say is this. Baptism expresses our desire to receive the promise of God's forgiveness and the power of God's Spirit living inside us. Peter, one of Jesus' earliest followers, stood up in the Jewish temple in Jerusalem, and the Holy Spirit had been poured out in a marvelous way, and they began preaching the good news about Jesus Christ. And as he was preaching to the very people who had helped crucify Jesus not many days before. He said, the one you crucified, God has made him both Lord and Christ and has given a proof of that by raising him from the dead. And the Bible says the people were pierced in their heart. They were convicted. They realized they'd done something very wrong and they said, what should we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. That's the promise and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's the power. Baptism in a unique way helps us connect to the promise of forgiveness of sins and the power of God's Spirit coming to live inside us. Baptism, fourthly, demonstrates a person's willingness to accept the gospel. The Bible says in many instances throughout the book of Acts that when someone heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they wanted to accept the gospel, the very first thing they did is they were baptized. And that indicated that they were in, that they were accepting the message of Jesus. Nothing like baptism quite helps us signify we're making a commitment to follow Christ from now on. Baptism is a unique picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. At the heart of the gospel was Jesus died, he was buried, and he rose again. And baptism in water is a picture, it's a symbol of death, burial, and resurrection. I tell people when I baptize them, I normally say as I'm putting them under the water, death, burial, and resurrection.
because the death, burial, and resurrection, the heart of the good news message of Jesus Christ, that he died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that on the third day he arose again according to the scriptures. And baptism helps us uniquely identify with that redemptive act. We are dying to sin, we're buried in a watery grave, and we are raised up to walk in a new life with Jesus. Baptism initiates us into Christ and His body, the church. The Bible often uses the analogy that when we're baptized, we're baptized into Christ and we're baptized into the church. And lastly, baptism symbolizes salvation. It's a symbol of salvation. There's really two symbols of salvation Jesus gave us. One is baptism. The other is the Lord's Supper. Baptism is a one-time act of committing our life to Christ. Communion is an ongoing remembrance of that act as well. So I think those are some important reasons why you should consider why uh, to be baptized. All right, let me give you just a few clarifying thoughts that... I have found to be helpful to people because they always have questions after they hear us teach about baptism. So here's just some what I call clarifying thoughts just to make sure I'm being clear in what I communicate. The first is this. Baptism is a God-given, God-chosen event that marks us as followers of Jesus Christ. Why are people baptized? Because God told us to be. Because it was revealed from Jesus Christ. He gave us the pattern of being baptized himself, the model, and he gave us the command. So it's a God-given, God-chosen event that marks us as a follower of Christ. Secondly, we believe it's God's will that every believer in Jesus is to be baptized. The Bible says, everyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. I, I think it's clear to me in the Bible, it's God's will for every person to be baptized because of the important implications and significance that I talked to you about just a few minutes ago. Thirdly, we do not teach that baptism alone saves anybody, nor do we judge those who aren't baptized. That's not our, our role here to run down what other churches teach in their theology of baptism or how they what they practice with regard to baptism. That's never been the spirit that I've had or really that the Journey Church has. However, we will never tell someone who hasn't been baptized that they don't have to be. I, I, I Consider this. If it was important enough for Jesus to walk 70 miles to be baptized, and that's literally how far he walked from Galilee to the Jordan River where he was baptized by John, if it was important enough for Jesus to include in his final instructions to his disciples, and he did, if it was important enough for the early church to obey as soon as it was founded, then it's important enough for us to obey. Another clarifying thought is baptism was not intended for infants and those who can't or won't believe in Jesus as Messiah. We practice believer's baptism. And believer's baptism means that a person needs to be able to believe or to express their faith that they do believe. They need to indicate that they are able to follow Jesus and they're willing and they understand what it means to follow Jesus before we baptize them. Obviously, infants can't do that. Now, many people were baptized as infants. I was. Um, and it's not a knock against people who or parents or godparents who ha have, have done that for their children. But I really think when we study baptism in the Bible, it really is for those who choose to be baptized. Baptism is not something that's imposed on someone or that's forced on someone. It's something they willingly choose because they're giving their life to Jesus. So we dedicate infants here. We uh, pray for our babies, and we certainly want them to grow up one day to make their decision to follow Jesus and to be baptized. But we don't practice infant baptism here. Baptism in the Bible was by immersion. Therefore, we only practice and accept baptism by immersion for those desiring to become members of Journey. I, I don't think there's any argument from anyone of any uh, denominational background that baptism as it was originally practiced in the New Testament, as Jesus experienced it, as the disciples practiced it, was by total immersion. In fact, that's what the word means. The Greek word is baptizo, and it means to dip, to plunge, or to submerge under water. And so we practice baptism by immersion 
only. And if you've never experienced baptism by immersion, I want to encourage you to consider that because it uniquely connects you to the earliest church and to how Jesus did it himself. And that's part of what we uh, ask people to do as they become members of Journey Church. Baptism is not something we argue about. It's just something we celebrate and obey. I know through the years, churches have bickered and fought and argued and gotten all kinds of debates over baptism. That's not our heart at all. God didn't give us this wonderful ordinance, this beautiful symbol to argue about, to fight about. It's something that should unite us. When we're baptized, we're baptized into Christ. It's something that, that tells us that there's neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female. We're all one in Christ. And if we've been baptized into Christ, we, we have a common bond, a unity. So baptism is something that we shouldn't argue about. We should just celebrate it and joyfully obey it. The last thing I want to say is this, and this is the most important thing I'm going to say. The wrong question to ask about baptism is this. Do I have to be baptized? That's the wrong question. The right question is, what's stopping me? What's stopping me? I want to ask you, what's stopping you? Even today, people come to our church offices during the week. We set up their baptism. We do it. Sometimes people just walk in and they say, I need to do this. A lot of times you see that happen on the weekend. We certainly believe we're going to see a lot of people do this on September 14th and 15th. But you don't have to wait till then, my friend. You can, you can call the church office. You can come to a weekend gathering this weekend or any time that you see this teaching and you can say, nothing's stopping me anymore from doing what Jesus did himself, what he commanded his followers to do and what the early church and churches since then have practiced as they follow Jesus. So I want to encourage you to pray about that. Maybe you watch this and you want to share this with someone else, share this link, share this video. We're praying that God would use that baptism weekend on September 14th and 15th in a great way to reach a lot of people who are far from him. I want to pray and uh, I'll sign off. God, thanks for this time just to be able to give some simple teaching. And I pray it's helpful and practical. And I pray you use the power of your word, the example of Jesus, the, uh, the model of the early churches as they joyfully followed you in baptism. I pray that it will lead to many, many people experiencing that in a powerful way on September 14th and 15th at Journey Christian Church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To give you an idea of what the baptism celebration weekend can look like, watch this video summary highlight of what happened last year. Today, I'm asking you to step across a line from being a fan to being a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus asked those who choose to follow him to signify their commitment and loyalty by humbling themselves and being immersed in water as a symbol of obedience and a sign that you're accepting him as your Lord and as your Savior. I lift my hands to believe again. You are my refuge, you are my strength. As I pour out my heart, these things I remember. you, God, that we have the opportunity to share in your joy for lost people finding you, for people finding a home in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for what you let us be a part of and what we've witnessed here today. And Lord, you're not done. And we believe that. And so we just want to continue to worship and just see what you continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.